What's the word, y'all? Another instant reaction, one take, no edits. Kyrie Irving is a Dallas Maverick. Let me let me say that one more time. Kyrie Irving is a Dallas Maverick. See, something told me not to leave the house today. It's Sunday. We usually go grocery shopping for the week. We be running errands and stuff. I was like, you know what? Let me chill. Let me tune in to the Charlotte Hornets play against the Orlando Magic on a Sunday afternoon, a game that nobody's watching other than the people in the arena. I was one of the, I'm one of the people on the outside that was watching because I, I just had a feeling. I didn't think it was going to be Kyrie Irving this fast, but I had a feeling that something in the NBA was going to fall, and the biggest domino has fall, has failed, has failed. Uh, Kyrie Irving is a is a Dallas Maverick. That is so crazy to say. All right, here we go. If you don't know, here's the trade package. It is the Brooklyn Nets um, trading Kyrie Irving for Spencer Dinwiddie, Doran Finney-Smith, a first-round pick in multiple seconds. Uh, off rip, I was like, whoa, that's insane. It happened. Luke and Kyrie, how this going to look? We're going to talk about that. And then the tweet came out six minutes after that, saying that the Dallas Mavericks are sending a 2029 unprotected 2029 Cuban? We couldn't add a top four. I'm saying we, but you get what I'm saying. A, a, a lottery, a top eight, a one, a one. Now you probably think, okay, we got Luka Doncic for, for all of this time. We can't even say for sure the way players are moving across the country to play for different teams. Now I'm not saying Luka's that type of dude, but I'm just saying 2029 is so unpredictable. And, and two years ago was unpredictable. Last year was unpredictable. 2029 unprotected is crazy. Especially considering this could be a half a season plus postseason rental. And I'm also looking that my green screen is tripping. So let me let me do that. Again, no takes. Look at that. Now the green in the background is still green. You see Jason Tatum right here on that speaker? That's Jason Tatum, if you didn't know, shooting a jump shot. Um 2020 not protected is crazy. Especially considering this could be. Now, now you can argue that you don't pull off this trade unless you're giving Kyrie Irving what he wants, because obviously the reason Kyrie Irving wanted out was because of the contract stuff. We're not trading for him, and we know he wants this amount of money, and that's the reason he was willing to walk. So if Mark Cuban and them must think, okay, we're going to trade for him, we're going to give him this money, but now I'm thinking about it, even if you give him a four-year, $200 million, he's looking for it, that's still ending before 2029. <laughs> so this is, this is a swing. Will it be worth it? I mean, only time will tell. The news cycle is so crazy because we found out that Kyrie Irving requested a trade out of nowhere on Friday. And again, I'm saying out of nowhere because as long as Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant had been healthy, I think this the stat was they were 20 and 4 on the season, something along those lines. 20 and 4 on the season. So when they had been playing together, they had been damn good, damn near unstoppable, and they looked like they were a contender. And, and then Kevin Durant got injured or whatever. He's going to be back soon. So you thought that there was nothing going on. Kyrie Irving and things had been going great for like two months or so, and he requested a trade. And in that, he said, either you move me before the deadline or I'm going to walk in free agency. Basically saying, hey, you do what you got to do, but no matter what, I'm leaving. And it also came out from Chris Hayes that, that um, of course, it was the contract things that led to this. But he did say that if you don't move me before the deadline, I'll honor my contract. I'll continue to play. And that left a little bit of wiggle room for Joe Sign Company cause, cause, because when they were hooping, they were damn good. So maybe there's a world where we don't find the per perfect trade partner and we're willing to let Kyrie Irving just play out the season. Maybe we do something, some damage in the postseason. And then if you want to walk, so be it. But nope, this morning it came out that the Brooklyn Nets said, you sit your ass at the crib, Kyrie. We're going to find a partner. And it ended up being the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks also said six days ago uh, that they were willing to trade Doran Finney-Smith for a, a star-level player. And we laughed. I laughed. Dor Doran Finney-Smith, like, he's a really good role player. Doe is like that, you know what I'm saying? Catch a shoot. Uh, he's going he's gonna to be on the perimeter. He's a big wing that guards on the perimeter. Like, he does a lot of stuff. But willing to give him up for a star player? And it happened. They, they literally did it. They literally did it. Mark Cuban. And I've been guilty of this, right? I've been guilty of this, saying that the Dallas Mavericks need to get Lucas something because you never really know what's going to happen. You have to take advantage. When you have a, a talent like Luka Doncic, you have to do everything in your power to build a team around them that's competent enough to compete for a championship. They were just in the conference finals last year, which is a dub, but like that that can't be the way we think oh we were there last year we could just maybe go on another run with the same roster absolutely not so anytime Luka Doncic had a game where he had 26 points and nobody else on the team had double digits I was tweeting about it I had a tweet that said Mark Cuban please like do something do something help this man out he got 57 points and Spencer then when he got 12 he's a second leading scorer um, and they did it they got Kyrie Irving 
Um, and now we can start thinking about the fit between Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic as far as on-court stuff. I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem because as long as we are just talking about the basketball, Kyrie Irving alongside, whether it be Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving alongside, LeBron James, he's a guy that or LeBron James specifically is the one we should probably focus on because uh, LeBron James is definitely more ball dominant than Kevin Durant is. Um, Kyrie Irving has been able to be successful. Now, Kyrie Irving is not a dude that needs the ball in the sense to be the ultimate version of himself. I just looked it up before I hit recording this video. He's shooting 42% on 3.2 three-point catch-and-shoot attempts this season. Like, Kyrie Irving, we know he can he can do his thing without needing the ball. And, of course, Luka Doncic is a guy that uses and needs the ball a lot. But this is also going to go into allowing Luka to not have to have the ball all the time because Kyrie Irving is that nice. Strictly talking about the basketball, it is definitely going to hurt to lose guys like Dinwiddie. It's going to hurt to lose Doe because now that perimeter got, some, got a hole in as far as perimeter defense. Josh Green got to get to work. And jo Josh Green ain't 6'8 with wingspan. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But it's the price you have to pay in order to get a guy like Harry Irvin. Now, again, I think that 2029 first round pick unprotected is kind of crazy. But, but like, having to give up quality, quality players in this trade is a necessity. So now you're running out lineups or Harry Irvin. You have Luka Doncic. You're going to have Christian Wood eventually. Um, you hope that Maxi Kleeb is back. Like, I think they're, they're hoping – that, that Maxi Kleber comes back and he's extremely healthy and he's the Maxi Kleber we saw in the last year title run or conference finals run because they're going to need that. They're going to need his protection. They're going to need his his versatility on defense because losing Doran Finney-Smith is, is, is ridiculous. Now, I, do, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is not the end of the work for the Dallas Mavericks. I don't think they're about to go crazy because, again, they just gave up 20-29. So you can't go much crazier than that. You just traded for Kyrie Irving. You can't get much crazier than that. But I do think there's they have some holes now where they'll probably try to fill using – some stuff, and I just don't know exactly what that is. But I'm excited to see the Dallas Mavericks take a risk, even if that risk is – I'm sorry, I can't convince myself that 2029 was worth going to destroy. I can't convince it. Um, I'm sure – I was going to say who you who you were competing against. You are probably competing against, well, the Lakers. The, maybe the Lakers were willing to throw in 2027, and they were like, nah, we, ride, we want something further down the line. And now the Dallas Mavericks say, give me 2029. I don't know. Um, but from the Brooklyn Nets perspective, again, we mentioned in our video – it's not a trade where you're looking for crazy draft capital. Again, I think you got some. You did get crazy draft capital in 2029, but you wanted to get people in that can help you right now. Spencer Dinwiddie's back in Brooklyn, and Spencer Dinwiddie's having a really decent season, and it just adds another ball handler to the team since you're giving up a ball handler in Kyrie Irving. And Doran Finney Smith on the wing is dope because right now they've been a decent defense, and a lot of that is is uh, Nicholas Claxton holding it down, who should get some all defensive votes. It's Kevin Durant playing the best defense of his career when he's healthy, and then Ben Simmons don't score the ball, don't do shit offensively, but defensively he's still locked in and stuff. And now you add Doe to that, and Doe has the two way thing. Like a guy like Joe Harris, he's a great shooter. He ain't got the defensive side of the ball. You know what I'm saying? Seth Curry's one of the best shooters in basketball, but he ain't got the defensive side of the ball. And Doe can add, like, slightly above average three-point shooting when when he's doing his thing and, and really good defense. So I, I really do like this trade for, for what it's worth for the Brooklyn Nets. Because, again, we knew that the value wasn't going to be some of the stuff that y'all was sent, sent to me, which was Zach Levine being the one traded, or, or the value... Um, I saw some other things like uh, uh, C.J. McCollum and stuff like that. You're running to get that tier player, the, the tier underneath the current all-star tier, but you got some solid role plays, which is exactly what you need for Kevin. Now, Kevin in this without no stars. Kevin is in this with his own team with no stars around him anymore, and we'll see what happens come playoff time because I do think once Kevin comes back, this team is still competent enough to hold one of the top six spots. It could be wrong, but the team is deep. You know what I'm saying? The team is good, and I would love for them to get like a backup center in this one. May I mean, maybe you didn't want to take the Dwight Powell's contract or something because you are running some Dayron Sharp who will go out there and occasionally give you a 14-rebound game, but he also let Al Horford shoot a wide open three without even turning his head to notice the ball hit bit inbound. Like, that's the type of stuff you can get from Dayron Sharp, and they're, I think Brooklyn Nets fans are probably feeling pretty good right now after Cam Thomas just showed that he can randomly drop you a 44 and now you got Doe and Spencer Dinwiddie I'm sure that there's going to be the what is it the five stages of grief or whatever you, you're going to go through that Brooklyn and I think Dallas is about to go through a different couple stages with Kyrie Irving on, on the team and I, I'm still waiting again this trade just happened and I follow a bunch of Mavs fans I'm I need to go through their tweets I need to go watch some of their videos because I don't know exactly how they're going to feel about this of course Kyrie Irving again is a talent uh, as far as talent on the market, there was no bigger name, so you did that. You know what I'm saying? You got another ball handle for Luka Doncic, so he could take a goddamn break every once in a while. <laughs> and you got another dude that can be a killer. Kyrie Irving is a killer, bro. Fourth quarter scoring, I think he still leads the league. So you got two bona fide closers in your lineup. It don't get a lot better than that. It just don't. 
You know what I'm saying? It don't get a lot better than that. Even if you had to give up 20-20, I still can't. Lakers. Quickly. Rob Palenka fumbled it. It had to get too complicated. It had to get too complicated. They didn't have the role players that the Brooklyn Nets were looking for. This is my speculation. Of course, I ain't my sources. And my two my two sources one in on any of these organizations. So I would assume that that the the Lakers, of course, don't have the role players that the Brooklyn Nets were looking for. So they were calling around to the Spurs. They were calling around to the Jazz, trying to get them to come in and help them out, get Kyrie Irving. And in this one, you see, they didn't. The Dallas Mavericks didn't need any help. Sweeten the pot a little bit with a 2029. Like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done talking about 2029. But they sweeten the pot a little bit, but they didn't need any help. This is a trade that they might have negotiated for a couple seconds. It was like, all right, you got it. Those one of the better role players in basketball. Dorm, uh, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie is one of the better s- secondary type ball handler type dudes. And now he's basically going back to a primary ball handler now he's in Brooklyn. Um, and the, the Lakers missed out. Lakers missed out. I mean, even LeBron James was talking about it. In his post-game interview, LeBron James tweeted a crown in the eyes emoji once he found out Kyrie Irving had requested a trade. He went to a post-game interview and they asked him about it. And he said, that's the piece we need to get over the top. And they failed to do it. And it felt inevitable. You know, we made a video where we were talking about the potential teams. The Lakers were number one. I think I had the Mavs number two or number three. I think they were number three because the Clippers were number two. Another team that missed out on an opportunity because they also have really quality role players that could have done similar things to what Dora Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie, but they probably weren't thinking about giving up a 2029. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so the trade has happened. Let me know what you think. Kyrie Irving is a Dallas Maverick. We might revisit this in two days and have a different opinion, but again, instant reacts, baby. Leave a like, subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. The link is in the description. Uh, level-headed content there. Uh, similar to me, if you like what I do around here, you're going to like the Enjoy Basketball newsletter because that's that's what we do. I appreciate you.